Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series on programming with C. In this video, we'll discuss switch statement. Switch statement is a multi-way decision making statement with following syntax. Let's say we have an integer expression value. We will evaluate the value of expression using switch and based on the possible values of expression we can have multiple cases say case 1 each case we can perform certain function or perform uh, perform certain uh, processing then at the end of case statement we have to provide break we can write as many cases as we want if you look here i have written three cases how a switch statement is executed first it evaluates the value of expression if the value of expression is matching one of the case statements it jumps to that particular case and executes it the break statement is used for stopping the execution of case let's change the value of expression say one if i compile and run this particular code the output will get is one in this particular case as there is a matching case statement and that is executed if we change the value to 2 now the second case will be executed what if there is no matching case say for example 5 now in this case no case block will be executed and will get nothing now to deal with this, we can add a default statement in switch. A default statement will be executed whenever there is no matching case value. So in this case, since case 5 is not available, if we compile and run the code, the default block will be executed. Now let's experiment with switch statement. Let's try to change the data type of expression to float. Say float 5.1. What will happen if we specify expression as float? Let's compile the code. Keep in mind the expression value should be either integer or character. It cannot be float. So the thing is that you can have only integers in case of expressions for switch statements. Why? Because a floating point value is not whole. It is decimal value and rarely we will have expressions based on or switches based on a floating point value. Is it compulsory to specify break statement in switch? Let's remove this particular break statement. I am putting it in comment. What happens? And the expression's value I am changing to 2. If I compile and run, nothing different you will get second case to be executed. Now, let's change the value of expression to 1. Let's see what happens. If I compile and run the code, we will get both 1 and 2 getting printed. Why? A switch statement is executed in sequence. When the value of expression is 1, it executes, jumps to case 1 and checks. Is it matching? Yes, it's matching. It executes the block, but it doesn't find break. The break statement stops the execution of case and takes us out of switch. But since there is no break, the switch statement falls through to the next case and the next case is executed and after next case it finds break and at this point it exits out of the switch statement and continues with its further execution. You will find many questions on switch statement in most of the MCQ based exams. 
Now we'll discuss about loops in C. So what is a looping statement? A looping statement allows us to execute blocks of code repeatedly. There are three types of loops in C. For loop, while loop and do while loop. All the loops have three main components. First, initialization. The initialization expression tells us where to start. Next, we need to specify the termination. The termination expression tells us when to stop. Whereas, we need to specify the third increment condition. The increment expression allows us to specify how to step over. Let's implement this in for loop. In for loop, we can specify initialization, termination and increment all together. Let's have a look at the syntax of for loop. First of all, we have to declare the initialization variable, say int i. As mentioned, we have to specify the initialization expression inside for will initialize i to 0. Then we have to specify the termination condition. Let's write a simple termination condition i is less than 5. What it means? I want to continue this loop starting at 0 and till the value of i becomes 5. That is, when the value of i becomes 5, I want to stop this particular loop. Now we need to specify the increment condition and here we are incrementing the value of i by 1. Let's write a statement inside the for loop. If we want to print the value of i, we'll just specify printf statement. printf percent %d followed by i and we'll print this value on a separate line. For that, we'll specify slash n. If I compile and run the output that I'll get is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So as you can see, we have started with value of i equal to 0. Then the block will be executed. It will check whether the value is less than 5. Yes, the value is less than 5. The value is printed. The value is incremented now and i becomes 1. The same process is repeated every time we are checking the value of y if i's value is meeting the criteria we are continue with the continuing with the execution we are incrementing the value of y this continues till the value of i is less than 5 and this is how a for loop is executed now let's have a look at the syntax of y if I want to write the same program using while, how I will write? Obviously, I'll require the initialization variable and I need to initialize it outside. We can't specify all the conditions together. Then we have to specify while and inside while we have to specify the termination condition. The termination condition is i is less than 5 and then what we want to do, we want to print the value of i. So, we'll specify how to print the value of i and now we need to specify increment. Now, when, where I should specify the increment, the increment needs to be specified inside while. Let's execute this code and we'll get the similar output 0 to 4. So, what's the difference between for loop and while loop. If you look at the two, both per perform same operations. The difference is I should use for loop when I know the number of iterations to be performed in advance, whereas I should use while when I don't know the number of iterations to be performed in advance. So this is how we can use while loop. Now let's have a look at do while loop. In do while loop, first we specify do and then we specify the printf function like printf 
percent d slash n and say I'm printing the value of i and now we increment the value of i inside the loop where we are checking the termination condition. The termination condition is checked at the end like this while i is less than 5. Now we need to provide semicolon here to mark the end of do while loop. If we compile and run, we'll get the similar output. So what is the difference between while and do while? If you look at the syntax, in while the condition is executed in the beginning, whereas in case of do while the condition is checked at the end. It means that while is entry control loop and do while is exit control loop. Means what? We are checking for the condition at the entry in case of while, whereas at the time of exit in case of do while. Another difference between while and do while is the do while loop will be executed at least once since we are checking the condition at the end. So this is how we can use all the three loops. Now let's experiment with the loops in C. Will, you will find many questions related to uh, loops in uh, most of the exams. Now, first of all, let's write for. We have, we know that for requires initialization, termination and increment condition. Let's say I'm not writing any of this and then I'm writing one printf statement. If I specify the printf statement like this, A, now any guesses what will happen if we compile and run this code? Let's first check whether it compiles. Yes, it compiles. And if I execute it, what I'm getting is A printed many number of times. Why it is happening? Since we have not specified any termination condition, the compiler doesn't know where to stop or when to stop. So an empty for statement is valid but specifying empty for statement results into infinite execution of a loop. So make sure that you are specifying termination condition. Now let's say I just specify termination condition. Say for example, I'm specifying uh, say int i is equal to 5 and I'm just specifying the termination condition here, i is less than 5. Now what will happen? If I compile this particular code and if I run it, what will happen is it will not print anything. Now why? What is value of i? i is 5 and I have specified i is less than 5. The condition is executed once and that time it has not met the criteria. So the loop won't be executed. Now let's say I'm specifying the value of i equal to 3. Now if I compile and run, what will happen? Same thing. The program will get executed infinitely. Now why this is happening? Since we have not specified the increment condition, the value of i remains 3 throughout and the loop is executed, it checks the condition i is 3. i never gets incremented and that's why the loop will execute infinitely. So whenever you are writing for, make sure that you are specifying termination condition appropriately. Similar thing can happen with while. So let's say the same code if I specify while i is less than 5. If I compile and run, since I have not written any increment condition, the loop will execute infinitely. So there is a possibility that your loops gets executed infinitely. You have to make sure that you are writing appropriate termination conditions. Now look at this example. Here, I am specifying i plus equal to 2. So it's not necessary to increment 
by a factor of 1, you can increment by any value. Now let's say if I specify this, what will happen? If I print the value of i, now we are not incrementing by 1, we are incrementing by 2. So for the first time, i's value would be 0, then we have incremented it to 2, then we have incremented it to 4 and now it will get incremented to 6. But when it is 6, it will not meet the criteria and will stop. What kind of output I will get for this program? As discussed, I will get 0, 2 and 4. So, it is not compulsory to increment the value by 1. You can increment the values with any value. What if I don't specify initialization? Let's compile and run this code. Now in this particular case, again I am getting the value of 0, 2 and 4. Since I have not initialized the value of i, it has initialized the value of i to 0 and then next time 2 and 4. But whether i is initialized to 0 or not depends on compiler. Few of the compilers initialize the values of the variable to garbage values. So you may get a different result on different compiler. Let's have a look at this example. Now inside this for, I'm adding another for loop. So what I'm doing, I'm adding another for which is initializing j to 0, j is less than 5 and j++. plus plus. Now, what happens when I run this particular code? I am adding one more line here, print f, and I am just leaving a new line. So, such kind of loop inside another loop is known as nested loop. Let's have compile and runs and see how this code is executed. So, you will find the loop is executed five times what it means so whenever we have nested loops we call the out the loop we have outer loop and inner loop the outer loop executes the inner loop the inner loop checks the condition and completes its execution and then the outer loop is executed it means that here in this case the outer loop is executed 5 times and for each execution of outer loop the inner loop is executed 5 times. So we can nest one loop into another loop.